What's up guys, this is going to be the second part of my saving data with SQLite and adding it to a list view tutorial. This is uh, the second part of the newest one that I made. So if we uh, view the data, click on some of the data, we have the ability to edit it or delete it. So I can click delete and you can see it gets removed from the database. If you didn't watch the first part, check that out first. I'm going to put a link here and uh, I'm just going to be carrying on from the end of that last tutorial. So we left off last time right here. We just set the list view to the adapter in the list data activity. Now I'm going to set an on-click listener to the list view that navigates us to the, the edit screen. So we just use a set on item click listener. And the first thing we'll do is grab the name from the list view and also log the name. So we grab the name from the list view go by calling adapter view .get item at position I. This will return an object, but we can convert it to a string by just calling to string. I think it'd be fine like if you called this an object um, and then just remove that, but we know we have a string, so we might as well just use a string. And then just log the name. Once we're in the edit screen, we're gonna need a name and an ID to reference so that we can edit or delete it. So we're gonna create another method inside of the database helper, and I'm gonna call it get ID. So actually I'll call it get item ID, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna take the names and then it will search the database and return the ID that's associated with that name. So like always, we dec declare our SQLite database object, then we create our query. So our query looks like select column one. So select ID from the table where name equals the name that I said. Then we declare our cursor object and return the data. Okay, that's it. We can go back to list data activity. Now we have our cursor, so we can use our database helper and use get item at ID, which we just created and then pass the name. And that will return the ID. Then we'll get the data by using the data.move to next method. I'm going to create this integer right here just to make sure that when we search, we actually return something that exists. So just a tiny bit of error handling. So if uh, here, if EID is greater than negative one, which will be the case if there is data returned, then we want to log it. And if not, we will print out a message that says no ID associated with that name. Now that we have the ID and the name, we want to start an intent and navigate to our new screen. So our new screen is going to be called edit data activity. And I haven't made that yet. Now, uh, in the other activity, we, we need to know what the ID is and what the name is so that we can reference it. So we have to attach some extras to this intent. So we can attach uh, two extras, one with the key ID, one with the key name, and then just pass the ID and pass the name. And then we just start our activity, and that'll take us to our edit data activity class. So we're all done in this class. Let's copy this and create a new Java class. Call it edit data activity. And we're going to need to create a new layout. We're going to call it edit data layout. So go over to layout, new, edit data layout. And I'll just paste the layout in. Nothing special here, just a text field and two buttons. So we can close it. So in our edit data activity, we've got to declare our tag, our button, edit text field, database helper, and two global variables, one for a string and one for integer. These are going to hold the extras that I mentioned from over here. So we have tag, button, edit text, database helper, and then here is where I'm going to store the extras. Now I declare everything in on create. Then we create an intent. I'm going to call it received intent and use the method get intent so that we can get these extras that I attach to this intent. So we create a new intent, call it received intent, and then call the method get intent. Now we need to get the extras. So here's the extra for the ID, and then here's the extra for the name. Let's give some more space down here. So basically to get the extra, all you do is reference the key. So in this case, the key was ID. In this case, the key was name. This is just a default value in case this ID doesn't exist. Now we need to set the edit text field to the name in question. So we just do set text and pass the name. Let's throw in our toast method at the bottom. Now let's create some unclick listeners for our buttons. First button will be the save button here. First thing we want to do after we click save is check to make sure that the value in the text field isn't null because we don't want to add a null value to the database. It doesn't make any sense. We use get text to string to get the value. Now let's check to make sure that it's not null. If the item doesn't equal null, then we're going to do some stuff. And if it is null, we have to say, you must enter a name to the person. To update something that's already in the database, we're going to need to create another method in the database helper. So we'll go to the database helper and we'll create a new method. This method is going to be called update name. And like always, we first declare an SQLite database object. Then we create our query. So in our update name method, we're going to be passing the new name that we want to change it to, the current ID, and the old name that we're changing it from. So then our query looks like update table set the name equal to new name where 
ID equals the ID in question and the name equals what the old name was. Query is pretty self-explanatory. Now let's name or let's sorry, let's log the query so that we can look at it for debugging purposes and let's log the new name and then let's execute the query. So we have our query here that we're just going to print out. We have the new name that we're changing it to and then we can call uh, database.executesql to execute the query. Now we're done here, we can go back to edit data activity and we're going to update the name in question. So we just use database helper, call update name, which we just created, and we're gonna pass the new name first of all. The new name will be item, the ID will be selected ID, and the old name will be selected name. Okay, we're done with the save button. Now let's go down to our delete button. Once again to delete, we're gonna have to create a new method in the database helper. So we'll go back to the database helper. First thing as always is create an SQLite database object. So you can kind of see a pattern here. Every one of these SQLite database object, SQLite database object. Hey, SQLite database object. Hey, another one, SQLite database object. So that's you know the first thing you're gonna do every time. And I bet you can guess the second thing is we're gonna create the query. So our query will look like delete from table where ID equals ID that I passed and name equals name that I passed. Then we're gonna log the ID and, no, we're gonna log the name and log the query and then execute the SQL, just like we did up here. So we have the query, the name, and then we execute the SQL. So we're done with that, back to edit data activity. Now we just create our database helper and go delete name, we pass the name, which is gonna be selected ID and then we pass the name, which is selected name. Then we just wanna reset the text to be blank and we wanna let the user know that we deleted it from the database. So we just go editable item, set text to nothing, and then let them know that they removed it from the database. All right, we're, we're done, I think. We just gotta add everything to the manifest. So we'll go to the manifest and add a couple activities. We have our list data activity and we have our edit data activity. And that should be good, let's run it. Okay, let's enter the first name, we'll go Mitch. And my brother's name is Blake, so let's add the second name. View the data, we can see Mitch and Blake are in here. Let's click on Blake, let's change it to Jess. Click save, and we'll go back to our list. And we can see Blake's name was changed to Jess. Now let's try and delete Jess from the database. So we'll go delete, it says remove from database go back to view data and we can see that she is removed from the database so that's it for this tutorial hopefully that was helpful if it was don't forget to leave a like below check out all my social media platforms follow me on linkedin twitter and instagram the best thing to follow me on is twitter because i post all my tutorials on twitter so if you want notifications for when i post new tutorials that's the best place to get them subscribe if you haven't already and thanks for watching